A Ja Production apresenta Agrifodas Renascentes e Bono do Xirangano Escutem só <risos> And welcome to the International Dance Week Online. We are a Free Flow Dance Theatre Company. My name is Jackie Latondres, and I'm the Artistic Director of Free Flow and the curator for this week's program. I am so thrilled with the talented lineup of Canadian artists that we've been able to bring to you this week. Despite the challenges of the pandemic, our artists have adapted and innovated in order to bring you new, exciting, and relevant work. As we think about the international and culturally diverse nature of dance, I'd like to begin by acknowledging that we're here on traditional lands referred to as Treaty 6 territory, and that the city of Saskatoon and all the people here are beneficiaries of this peace and friendship treaty. Treaty 6 encompasses the traditional territories of numerous First Nations, including Cree, Dene, Nakoda, Dakota, Soto, and the Métis Nation. We are dedicated to ensuring the spirit of reconciliation and Treaty 6 is honored and respected. This acknowledgement also reaffirms our relationship with one another. And in the spirit of International Dance Week, I invite you to take a moment to think about and reflect on the history of the land that you are on and express your own appreciation and personal acknowledgements.
I grew up across Saskatchewan. Saskatoon, Nakam, Weyburn, Kipling. In Kipling, I had a friend. I would place my hands on his shoulders and press up into the sky. We would talk about what we wanted to be someday. About running away to Saskatoon. <laughs> go to university and then eventually an island <laughs> where we could live together when we left I dreamt of returning, of walking through empty streets back to his door, of seeing his face. I filled my gut with fireflies. My family used to go to Tisdale to see my mother's side of the family. Us kids would run and jump onto the trampoline up into the sky. We'd race into the basement to tell stories in the darkness, laughter. Years later, I met my friend online. He was bi, I was gay. I didn't even understand that that could be an option. I fumbled around confused. I don't see that side of my family very often anymore, separated by time and distance. But I still remember placing my hands on his shoulders, pressing up into the sky his smile, and the sensation of fireflies. It was hard, it was very hard being a young gay man in a very macho society, where we 
where women and LGBT people were treated like second class, mistreated. I started to realize that uh, I had fantasy of handsome men, friends, as well as more mature men. At the time my father passed away, I started finding older men sexy. Like Freud would explain, the father figure. I explored girls before, like kissing them. I had few girlfriends. Then sexually I explored with them. But it, it wasn't fulfilling. But I remember my first time, my first encounter, man to man exploring sexually. I remember my hair and my entire body stood up. I was having goosebumps. My heart started going faster. My breathing. I started sweating from my palms and fingers. I started trembling. Couldn't talk or vocalize. What I was feeling was like a volcano getting erupted. That was a point when I realized that even I like girls, I love men, and how they excite me, my body, my heart entire self in my sexuality. I started dreaming of sexual encounters. We would be kissing, make love, myself being vulnerable and let this younger man to explore myself and my body. At the same time, I felt shame sex, dirty, even a sinner. As I mentioned before, once I was Catholic and being gay was not part of, accepted by the religion and by the church. I felt many times that I was not very welcome, neither in the church I felt very shame in my family. I realized that many times I, I was considering of committing suicide. And I'm glad I did it. When I found my true spirituality, the Afro-Brazilian religion, I realized that I was a good person. And then the healing started. My priest, who is no longer with us, mentioned to me that all the riches, they love us for who we are. So then I started self-love of myself and then, of course, loving others. Now, I completely accept myself for all my flaws and my virtues. And then, I can love others on me.
I still remember placing my hands on his shoulders, pressing up into the sky, his smile, and the sensation of fireflies. Hello everyone, my name is Dominga Robinson. I'm a Jamaican and Nakota woman from the Pheasant Rump First Nation in Southeast Saskatchewan in Treaty 4 territory. Tonight I'm here in Treaty 6, so thank you to the Treaty 6 people for allowing me to come onto their land and, and do this tonight. Um, I'd like to start off by saying, wow, what an amazing performance. You guys did such a great job. Thank you, Mitchell. Um, thank you, Newton, for such a, a beautiful collaboration that you guys have done here. It was really a moving piece. And so, Mitchell, um, given that, you know, Newton is fairly well known and he's he's pre uh, predominant in the world of this kind of contemporary dance, um, what was it like for you to work with someone who has such a huge presence in the world? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a, a great question. Um, I think uh, one, of the, one of the many things I love about working with Newton is that despite being an incredibly accomplished uh, artist and having this m massive body of work and all this recognition, he's just such a kind and humble and giving and personable person to just be around and to work with and he just exudes all of this positivity and love and it was just an absolute pr pleasure just being able to work with him um yeah uh, newton's a great great person and it's 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 been a real privilege yeah oh that's oh that's that's so wonderful <laughs> when someone is as wonderful as they say they are right <laughs> so that's great Absolutely. Um, <laughs> um, Newton, on your end, how did, now that we're in this COVID world and we're doing all these online things and all these technical stuff, like how did that affect your creative process with working with Mitchell here, doing it online like this? Uh, first of all, I say thank for the words uh, that you and Mitchell said. I think, uh, um, Mitchell is a, is a great artist that I really enjoyed meeting several times that I went to Saskatoon. And uh, I would like to say thank you to Jack for the opportunity to present this with Mitchell. And if we didn't have COVID, this wouldn't be presented this way. And uh, in a way, it's a great platform for many people from all over to be able to watch and see what we are doing. And uh, it was an incredible pleasure for me to work with Mitchell. And now I'm in tears. <laughs> And uh, uh, it, uh, it was beautiful. It was, uh, looked like that we, we know each other for many, many years. And uh, uh, I was afraid in the beginning because this is the first time ever that I'm choreographing with another artist, collaborating with another artist, and we are not in the same room for the entire piece. So do you feel like the online maybe helped a little? Or how did you feel about it, Mitchell? No, it, it was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. It's a new tool that I'm learning how to use. And uh, it actually, uh, it, instead of separating us, actually it make us to be together. Even if we're not six feet apart. So we are, um, you know, you're in the middle of Canada and I'm here in Toronto, so it's very far. But, <laughs> but I feel connected, and uh, it, it was a process at the beginning of the whole pandemic. But then I, I very quickly I learned how to use the Zoom, and uh, and collaborating with Mitchell was just fantastic. I think we were considering of creating something that was related with bo both of us being queer, and uh, him being from a different generation than I and how it was, uh, you know, we had conversations about how, how hard or how easy it was for him and for myself as well, and that was the beginning of the whole process, creating the piece. Yeah, I think, I think it was just, it was, I feel like it's the same kind of challenges that you face um, in person, uh, being vulnerable with another human being and uh, connecting with them, and uh, I think, I think it, it's it's really about um, for me this process was really about 
realizing that yeah you can you can create this really intimate and it, or this at least that's how it felt to me uh, this very personal piece um, with someone who is like way way far away from you I think the figuring that out throughout this um, was really empowering um, that we can do this even in these interesting formats <laughs> Yeah, for real. Um, you know what? Thank you, you guys, for this beautiful piece of work. Um, I'm leaving here thinking about this and feeling really emotional, actually. I feel very emotional about this piece. I don't know why it brought that out in me, but it, it did. And so I'd like to thank you both very much for, uh, for that. Um, and also, we'll take a moment here to thank the the funders and the sponsors. So thank you to SAS Culture, SASC Arts, Sightline De Design, and Free Flow Dance Center. Thank you all for tuning in. Thanks so much, take care. Thank you, Micho, it was beautiful. ready. Press down.
My name is Dominga Robinson from Treaty 4, First Nations, Nakota woman, uh, as well as Jamaican from Pheasant Rump, Nakota in the, in the southeast corner of the province. Um, I just finished watching your guys' show. It was so good. Um, I'm sitting here trying to process it. So I have a couple of questions I want to ask you guys on behalf of everyone. Um, so Roshana, I'll start off with you. Um, so you obviously, and I think everyone knows that you have a very well-established contemporary art practice and have been doing this for many years. So my question is more about the South Asian portion of what you do and kind of what training you've been through and how does that inform the contemporary uh, dancing that you do? Hi. Um, thank you for asking me this question. It's very nice to meet you. Um, I think, well, I've been trained in Bharatanatyam, which is a South Asian dance form from Tamil Nadu originally. And the elements of this dance form are based in rhythm, musicality, line, facial expression, gesture, and so much more, which already there's so much there and it's so rich to work with, even outside of the dance form of Bharatanatyam. So I've been training in Bharatanatyam since I was six years old and I continue my training today. But alongside my Bharatanatyam training, I also did have training in traditionally Western forms like ballet, jazz, and all of that. So inevitably, I have a multitude of different languages of dance in my body that all inform each other. And that's what's fascinating for me as an artist to kind of see where those intersections are or where they completely don't intersect at all and to see where I can take my practices and find different ways to experiment, play with the vocabularies in my body to create work that is true to who I am as a second generation immigrant who's straddled two cultures. <laughs> um, so all of these dance forms and my entire toolkit is really important to who I am as an artist. And I, I think it's great that I'm able to have platforms like this to explore and within and outside of my form as well. Oh, it's, it's really beautiful, um, the work that you do. So thank you for sharing that, that little bit of information with us. Um, so now Taylor, um, and I guess this can go to Roshana as well, but I'm wondering a little bit about how the two of you came up with the concepts for this and how you put it together using such a unique perspective and formula. Like it, it was just so artistically done and I'm just curious how that how that went for you. Sure yeah I can speak on that a little bit. Um, we decided to base it off of Zoom because of course during the pandemic everyone has had to use Zoom in one way or another so we figured using the Zoom platform everyone could relate to it. Um, we decided since we're using it anyways might as well get creative using that second device. So it was a challenge at times because it felt as if we were doing a duet with it with each other but also doing a duet with our devices and then having the two different devices was a lot to think about in our choreography um, just thinking about the different angles how certain things looked from one screen to the next so it was a whole other challenge and for both of us it was our first time choreographing fully over zoom so that was an experience for sure and as far as the concept behind it, we decided to focus in on distance because again, during the pandemic, everyone can relate to that feeling of distance. Even the people that are closest to you, you feel that distance between them during the pandemic. So we focused on distance. So our distance from the camera, our distance from our different styles. So from contemporary ballet to Bertinatium, that distance, and then just distance geographically between Brampton and Saskatoon. So that's sort of how we formulated it all, focusing on distance and trying to incorporate the different Zoom platform form. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> we also worked with then just, since we came in, we knew we had an idea and we wanted to basically find tasks where we can incorporate these ideas of distance. So using words or creating phrases based on certain ideas of distance. And we all picked 
kind of what distant meant to us during this pandemic. Um, but we wanted the progression of the piece to go from we're two very separate entities that eventually come together and have a conversation and are able to uphold the conversation over Zoom, even though there was initially that distance and initially that uncertainty of coming into a space together. Well, it really came off quite beautifully. Um, I think we all can relate to the Zoom story <laughs> this year, so very fitting. Loved the fusion of the two cultures and the, and the, and the fusion of your ideas. And um, thank you for, for that. Um, just a reminder to everyone who's watching that um, if you did enjoy the show, feel free to donate um, to help support what we're doing here tonight, um, along with the other supporters, the funders. So I'll start off by thanking SAS Culture, SAS Arts, Sightline Design, and of course, the Free Flow Dance Center. Thank you all again for joining us for another evening of International Dance Week, and we will see you tomorrow night for night number three. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs>
My name is Dominga Robinson. I am a Nakota Jamaican woman from Fez and Rub, Nakota First Nation in Treaty 4 down in the southeast of this province. And um, I, I'm a cultural worker with a love for all things art and particularly dance. And wow, I'm just absolutely sitting here um, trying to soak in what I just watched. And it was just absolutely beautiful. And thank you again to Juan and Lucy for that really I want to say enigmatic performance it's the word that keeps popping to my mind with when I think of what you you just presented here um, so thank you for that so um, now it's the question and answer portion of everything so I'm going to ask you a couple of questions and uh, pick your brains on things so Lucy I'm, I'm learning that you are an original company member of free flow dance from the 90s so that's so wonderful but I'm, I'm wondering a little bit about how unique this process has been from being here in person and actually being in the studio and now moving to this online format and how well that collaboration went between the two of you being so far away from each other yeah well um as people may know uh i'm based in toronto and juan is currently in victoria bc and uh, we've wanted to work together for a number of years we worked with marie jose chatier um out here in ontario uh, a number of years ago we wanted to work together and then juan left toronto to go west and i went ah oh, we'll never work together again so actually um, this this call to artists from free flow dance was like a like a spark uh, to say oh why don't we do it this way and why haven't we done it this way before because this technology has been there it was just the circumstance that that sort of pushed us to actually do it and like conceive of it as something and uh, it's been a really a joyful process I would say Juan and I spent at least half the time. We were in rehearsal <laughs> on Zoom talking, like talking about how things were where he was and how things are where I am in terms of the pandemic and global, more global, you know, ideas and issues that um, are ongoing and unfolding constantly. Um, and that was such an important part of being able to connect this way. Uh, um, it takes a lot of energy to connect with a dancer through a two-dimensional surface uh, you know as as dancers when we're in the studio we're used to like taking in information through peripheral vision and you know heat and wind and you know all these other senses but it's so visual um for this and and so it does take a lot a lot pulls at least for me one may feel very differently he's way younger than me so he's so got more energy um but it was like pulling a lot a lot of energy from like deep in the in the guts, but it's a really, really cool thing to learn um, this this other way of working. And I would I would work again with Juan in this way. I mean, hopefully we get to work in the same room <laughs> together again. But I would easily work with Juan again this way because it was really, really enjoyable to figure it out together. At least for me, he may have a totally different answer. <laughs> um. Juan, did you maybe want to answer that question as well? Yeah, um, it, pretty much everything that Lucy said, I agree with. Um, I feel that I feel that this is my first time performing in, on Zoom. So when we were invited, I had a totally different concept of what it was going to be performing like in Zoom. But I feel that 
I still got nervous. I still prepared. I still sort of like felt like I was in a stage. It was really weird. Like, I think I think is is more a mindset thing rather than where you are. Obviously, because we are together virtually, that is a difference because we don't have the person next to us. And like, you know, sometimes before you go on a stage, you have the other person to talk to or just to make eye contact with. So that was the difference. But I think in terms of in terms of being separated, but but just that feeling when you're about to go into stage, I felt that it was pretty similar. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, thank you for that answer. Um, Lucy, and I think uh, you had mentioned at one point in, when you were talking about the connections that were made. And I'm actually gonna direct this, this question towards Juan first, but I'm wondering about, um, as people of color, you know, we kind of carry, carry our ethnicity and our culture with us in almost everything we do, and particularly in our artistic practices. And so I'm wondering how your Colombian roots inform your contemporary dancing or how that comes in and how you share that with others when you're working online and across. And this is, it's, it's quite the um, exchange that has to happen there. Yeah, um, that's a good question. I feel, I feel that this time I, it's been very different, obviously, for many reasons and obvious reasons because we are online. Uh, but I felt I felt that I was able to when I when I grew up dan dancing Latin American music in Colombia. Um, there is that feeling inside you that you're dancing for joy and is cultural and is fun. And I had lost that with contemporary dance. I, it was still fun, but it was it was more brainy and it was more like academic in my brain, um, more thinking personally. Um, but because this is my space and and this is like my bubble, then I decided to listen to Latin music in my earphones. And like I'm I'm basically listening to like full on reggaeton while I'm dancing, while, <laughs> while there is this really contemporary song in the background. <laughs> so I'd never done that before, anything like that before. So I felt that I, I, I was able to bring sort of that joy and like, I, you know, like the chest is something that moves a lot or just if we talk about the aesthetics of Latin American music, chest is very, moves a lot and shoulders. Um, so I think I was able to sort of like, merge that with whatever we were doing today, which is actually part of research that I've been developing for a long time, is how can I bring my roots, my, the music that I grew up with that, you know, is not as complicated as contemporary music because contemporary music, oh, sorry, contemporary dance can be many, many, many things, it's endless. Um, Latin American music has very specific steps. Um, so I always try to think of how can I bring that into this sort of like new bubble that I live in, which is in Canada and the training that I've had in Canada, which was contemporary dance and ballet and all that. So I, I don't know the answer, but I feel that I'm slowly getting closer to that and being a, at home, dancing from home was a great way to do it because it's my bubble, it's my music, nobody knows. So yeah. Right on. So I guess the COVID and the isolation maybe had a positive impact in some ways. <laughs> so. It sounds like <laughs> for you both. So, well, um, thank you so much for taking some time to chat with me after your beautiful performance. Thank you once again for that performance. Um, I'm going to take a moment now to thank the funders and the sponsors. So I'll start off with, oops, sorry, SAS Culture, SAS Arts. Sightline Design, and of course, Free Flow Dance Center. Um, we are in the middle of a pandemic in an effort to continue to support the arts. Although this is being offered free, we are willing to accept donations. And if you can, please feel free to, to deno donate some money here to help support future uh, artistic endeavors here at Free Flow Dance. So. Thank you, everyone. Thank you uh, for tuning in, and we'll see you tomorrow night for night 
four. <laughs> Night number four of the week is going by so fast of the International Dance Week. Thank you all for logging in. Thanks, Amiga. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
tate kwa mani ma kwesho Iyo Maria to mi ame utate kwa mani ma kwesho Je te wako konta ma para la kot pele kota te ka mani ma ulana Jelele je wako konta ma para la kot pele kota te ka mani ma ulana o mo Utate kwa mani ngwa ulwana Yeah, 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 yeah Yo, mari, yang to mi ame Utate kwa mani ngwa ulwana
My name is Dominga Robinson. I'm a Nakota Jamaican woman from Pheasant Rump, Nakota First Nation in the southeast corner of Saskatchewan in Treaty 4. Uh, I am a lover of arts and dance particularly, so this is really an exciting week for me, getting to see all these amazing performances. And what a performance that was. I, I just feel... Yeah, I, like I said, I was feeling very light and very airy and very much like spring after watching that, sh that dance and that performance. So um, thank you. It was yay. <laughs> yay, thank you for that. Um, and so Laura, um, my question, and I'll start off with a question for you. Um, we know Paul Guy is a very well-known, established, talented choreographer. What was it like working with someone who specializes in both contemporary and African dance. How did you feel um, about this collaboration? Did you learn anything? How did, it, how did it go for you? Yeah, so I actually first met Paul Gudd doing a workshop th uh, with Free Flow, and that's where I first met him, and he taught us some awesome African. And um, so I was really digging those moves and his style, um, and uh, Collaborating with him was super awesome. He's a very chill person, just laid back, which is like me too. So we're on the same page for that. Um, yeah, I've just been like, it's been a great process um, other than obviously through um, Zoom and stuff. It's always hard as we've just experienced now with technology. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's a pleasure to work with. And um, yeah, it was just nice to kind of be out of more my style. So yeah. Great, thank you. And um, Polga, um, well, we know we're living in a COVID world right now and technology is our main way to continue to create and do art and, and that type of thing. And obviously there are some difficulties with that, but um, creating using an online platform like this, how did you do this via choreography? Normally you're in a room with the dancer and you're able to help to guide them and, and to show them. And so I'm yeah. curious how that worked for you uh, given this situation. Yeah, I mean, can, can you hear me before I keep going? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, this is the reality of the world we're living in right now. And uh, I also knew that adaptation is definitely one of those things that I had to put myself into. And uh, as Laura said, like both of us came in with a very chill mindset and very uh, uh, open perspective of what choreographing online means. And, uh, you know, one of the things that when I first came, even I sent some videos to Laura to learn, I was like, you know what, just learn whatever you can. And then once you have something, I can work with you and readjust movements and stuff like that. So I feel like, that was a very good strategy for me as a choreographer, cons considering that personally, I like to be in a studio. I like to see your face. I like to see your movement. And I like to see the details and be like, OK, I think, you know what, this arm here on the shoulder can, can transform into something else. But, uh, you know, like, but and then when you get to work on Zoom, you know, for example, like, you know, as Laura said, like, one day we spend more time on, on, on Zoom saying, like, can you hear me? Can you see me? <laughs> because of the failure and all of that kind of stuff. So um, the reality is we both embraced it, this, the struggle of dealing with technical issue, but also like we understood that actually that is the struggle that we need to face in order to uh, understand this piece, because it's all about that. It's about understanding that this time is that we're dealing with a tough time. And how do you sit on that? How do you live with that? How do you accept that? How do you share that with people? Yeah, yeah I, I completely agree. I think it's something, although it's allowed us a chance to all connect together across globally, there's a little bit of a challenge to it as well. So thank you both so much for thank your you. wonderful performance tonight and, and answering my questions. <laughs> I appreciate that. And if you at home enjoyed the performance, please feel free to donate and, and support Free Flow Dance and International Dance Week events, just like our sponsors, SAS Culture, SAS Arts, Sightline Design, and Free Flow Dance. 
Thank you, everyone, for joining in and bearing with the technical difficulties. Uh, we will be back again for night number five tomorrow, 7 o'clock, same place, same time. So thank you all for tuning in. Have a great night.
Corona, you came over again all of a sudden from darkness with more sharp and new weapon to eliminate the existence of life. The world sought and doctors talked about remedy that just drove meaningless words. Deserted schools, lonely streets, children forgotten to play and left without friends and color of life. Empty bar, empty restaurants and gloomy families all saddened and trembled with fear of unknown. Threats of corona like frightened cockroaches, perished bodies scattered over every undesired places. Lord Shiva, you're the only respite of our woes. Suppose we have committed many deplorable sins and breach of trust in divine blessings, but you are supreme Lord and our last destination. Accept our prayer and forgive us, destroy the demon and save the world from decimation. I owe everything to you, O Lord, my Lord. Let me watch the sunrise, let me touch the smiling flowers without pain. Cover me with in sweet perfume of your blessings and let me come back to life again. Después de la tormenta, viene su calma. Después de la destrucción y el dolor, viene su regeneración y su recuperación. Se llama madre, madre de todos, la naturaleza. Cada elemento de ella es la medicina, agua. Ponte guapa, madre, límpite la cara, límpite el cuerpo. Fuego, el corazón vuelve con fuerza, pasión y calor. Tierra, madroños en la sierra vuelven a crecer alimentado del suelo. Aire, los besos, pasando la respiración uno a otro, volvemos a apreciar todo lo que es invisible, como el aire cura. Madre, prepara la primavera y vuelven todas las flores. Vamos a celebrar.
performance. Uh, thank you both for that amazing collaboration. I literally had goosebumps watching you guys dance. It was very, very powerful. Um, and I could, I, you could really feel that connection between you two as well. Um, Sumitha, I'm going to start off. Thank you for taking some time. Nice to meet you both to, to speak with us tonight. Um, oh, I should introduce myself. My name is Dominga Robinson. I am a Nakota and Jamaican woman from the southeast corner of the province here. And so um, I'm a lover of dance and a, a longtime cultural worker. And so that's what I'm bringing to the table here with us, our conversation today. Yeah. Um, so, Sumitha. Yeah. How did you and Carrie develop the concept for this cross-cultural collaboration? We all know how challenging it can be sometimes to collaborate, and so I'm wondering how that went for you, how you came up with this concept. So me and Carrie, we've been, we know each other since the past four years, and uh, we've always uh, seen each other perform. So she has a very deep uh, emotions for Bharatanatyam or Indian classical dance form, even ODC. And I even I ha I'm very much interested to know more about flamenco. So we sat, when, when this project came up, we sat together and we thought of a plan for a project, a new project. And in everyone's mind right now, it's COVID, Corona, and how much it has affected us. And the arts, the people who are artistic, we, we are not, a, we want audience. We live for, you know, for our art, and we're not able to showcase it. So we thought, why not we just, you know, bring out positivity by first, you know, showing, showcasing the pain, you know, destruction that the COVID has caused, and then eventually evolving, you know, through positivity, you know, by getting deeper and closer to the nature. So that's why we have introduced the four elements, air, earth, water, and fire. So just get deeper to nature and everything is going to be fine. In, it might take longer than we imagined, but everything is going to be fine. So through our art form or through our project, we just want to showcase that there is going to be pain, there's going to be destruction, but eventually we are all going to emerge from it. That, that's so beautiful, that feeling of hope that you were portraying there. That's probably what was giving me the goosebumps and making me feel um, those emotions. So thank you for that. Um, Carrie. Uh, you guys have collaborated in the past. How has this new work moved your relationship and your understanding of each other and your cultures and and where you, your world views, I guess, would be? The it uh, it's I think works towards what we both believe strongly in. Um, we have, as Sumita mentioned, in a very beautiful, eloquent way. There's so many details about each of our art forms that they just kind of come together and combine. And so um, there may be, you know, in my case, um, I haven't lived in India. I haven't, you know, become part of that their culture in that as aspect. But uh, there's so many common relations um, that having lived in Spain, having, you know, day in, day out lived 
uh, performing flamenco and um, training with flamenco, um, there's so many similarities on a very emotional aspect. But also I think what I love working with Sumita, we've done it before, is I feel like it starts to make our art forms that might become from ancient countries a little more universal, that it'll always come from India, it will always come from Spain, but you know, I don't know about India, you go to Spain and you will find people from all over the world going to flamenco classes mm -hmm. and they're full up and everywhere from Japan to the Ukraine to, and I find it so beautiful because you no, know, not everyone speaks Spanish, not everyone, you know, eats tapas every day and, and dances in the streets every day. So I, you know, this just felt so easy to do. There's a metaphysical feeling that you know when you put stuff together even if it is you know over zoom it's easy to do if you're metaphysically and spiritually and just that energy whatever you want to call it you're connected in that way and pff, you can relax and let it just let it just flow and let it flow and it really did i have to say that that the collaboration was just absolutely beautiful and seamless the way you two Thank wove you. those two dances Thank together you. and I'm a fan of both styles so that was just like such a treat I'm literally sitting here like a, a fan girl so <laughs> thank you for that um, if you at home also enjoyed the performance please uh, click donate uh, to support the arts and and support uh, further dance going on here um, I'd like to also take a moment to wrap up by thanking the sponsors, uh, SAS Culture, SAS Arts, Sightline Design, and of course, Free Flow Dance Center. I hope you all tune in again tomorrow night for night number six of the International Dance Week. Thank you all, and uh, see you then.
I am the water. I am the water essence of this blue planet and part of every being, a reflection of the sky of the bluest of blues, of turquoise, sentient and severe, a dark so deep I swallow the light. In packets of waves and brilliance and refraction for breakfast. I am a change of state, fluid, vibrant and life-giving. A memory deep and in between, a perpetual, a finite. I am the water. Essence of this blue planet and parts of every being, a reflection of the skies, of the bluest of blues, of turquoise, sentient and survived, of dark so deep I swallow the light in packets of waves and brilliance and refraction for breakfast. I am a change of state. Fluid, vibrant, life-giving, a memory deep and in between, a perpetual, finite, a reflection and refraction of the microcosm of our connection. I am the water essence of this blue planet and part of every being a reflection of the skies of the bluest of blues turquoise sentient and severe a dark so deep I swallow the light in packets of waves for breakfast. I am change of state, a memory deep and in between a perpetual Finite, a reflection and refraction of the microcosm of our connection. I am 
water. Essence of this blue planet and part of every being reflection of the skies. Ancient and severe change of state memory. A finite reflection I am. Hi everyone, uh, Dominga here for the talk back. Um, I'm a Nakota Jamaican woman from the southeast corner of, of Saskatchewan, a little reserve called Pheasant Rump Nakota First Nation. I am a cultural lover um, and a lover of dance. And so I'm, I'm very excited to uh, speak with um, Eco Aboriginal and uh, Kyle tonight. Um, Thank you both for such a beautiful, beautiful performance. Um, I'm sitting here trying to process it a little bit still, uh, but I could really relate to the water imagery and I really felt like I was underwater oh. <laughs> I there for a moment. So um, that was, it really, it came off really, really well. Um, and thank you for uh, taking some time to talk with me now. Um, is it okay if I call you Janelle? Yeah. Totally. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'm, uh, so I'll just start off with asking you a quick question here. Sure. Um, so I think I know um, as an Indigenous woman kind of what inspires this uh, mm -hmm. piece and this this water imagery and, and, and the messaging that you were trying to get forward. But do you want to tell me a little bit about how you conveyed that to Kyle and how this whole thing came together for you? Okay, hmm, where do I begin? Okay, so this topic is near and dear to my heart, uh, both for like really personal, serious reasons, like accessing my basic human rights of water and sanitation to seeing the systemic issues of lack of access of clean drinking water to First Nations communities across Saskatchewan, across Canada, across the US, as well as in third world countries. So. That's a topic that's near and dear to my heart. But besides that, like, how do you embody that topic? It's so heavy. And I've been practicing a lot and creating my personal relationship to water, personifying it, honoring it, acknowledging it, trying to figure out the teachings and stories of my connection. Because as Nehio people, the Cree people of this territory, this is our duty and rights to protect these lands and waters. So that's, that's where I'm coming from with this work. But it's always really lovely to work with Kyle, who seemed really open to talking about this topic. Well, not talking about it, but also, but like creating works around it, dreaming works, uh, 
I'm not sure what you thought about like this whole process that happened, um, but I can tell you that like it was so interesting to try form and make a connection because it was all on Zoom pretty much in our practices except for like the one time we could get together and then today. So it's been really neat doing that process. So that's just some of the insights into like why we chose this topic and what I feel is how it came out to be today. So thank you for all your compliments as well. I appreciate it. <laughs> it really came across, uh, Janelle, I could, I could feel and relate. <laughs> as an Indigenous woman, I understand what you're speaking about. And so it was quite powerful. And so thank you for doing that. Um, Kyle, um, now typically and all week, we've kind of had two art dancers working together. And so now we've thrown spoken word in um, with dance and um, with some pretty intense um, topic here as well. So I'm wondering, how that went for you, uh, how this process has been. Um, yeah. Uh, the process has been actually delightful, <laughs> even though Janelle, it's nice to be in person with Janelle and being far was a bit of a challenge, but it was fun. Uh, just even the talking was cool, a nice reason to get to know someone and um, I love and need water as well. <laughs> so definitely resonated, uh, the topic resonated with me. And um, as far as working with spoken word, uh, I didn't really feel like it was that different than working with another dancer. I mean, Janelle's definitely a natural mover uh, and had some training in her past and that, but <laughs> likes to move. So that was very um, easy and inspiring. Um, I think more perhaps than most spoken word poet, <laughs> spoken word artists. So, yeah, mm -hmm. that was a treat. Cool. Well, let me just say the collaboration came off really, really well, and I, I think everyone. I am hoping. I think these are being recorded and shared after, so I think people should tune in and check that out again. If you at home enjoyed it please feel free to donate and support the arts uh, especially in these challenging times as we try to transition through um, and keep everyone safe uh, i'd like to take thank the sponsors sas culture sask arts sightline design and of course free flow dance now thank you all for tuning in uh, we'll be back again tomorrow night for night number seven of the uh, International Dance Week Online. Thank you all and have a great evening. Que tení 
bon bel garçon, habillé tout en blanc, pour le monter au palais. Papa que de bel garçon, le dernier bon bel garçon, habillé tout en blanc, pour le monter au palais. Le habillé tout en blanc, l'ensemble y ont débuté. Le habillé tout en noir, l'ensemble y ont sénaté. Le habillé tout en blanc. Agolona fuawa, I 
wolele hi wolele ho angolo na fu angwa hi wolele hi wolele ho angolo na fu angwa hi wolele That was so beautiful, so energetic. I, oh man, I was, I was with you. I was with you over here chair dancing. That was so amazing. Thank you. And what a great way to end off the week of International Dance Week. It was just beautiful. Congratulations on a very successful performance. And we had um, a special um, our our mus mu musician. She's a Juno Award winner. And she composed um, the whole sequence for us. So from a very uh, neutral beginning and then to a Haitian traditional uh, sound and then to a Cub Cuban traditional sound and then to another uh, Cuban traditional sound and then to a samba to finish it in Gaga, which is Raha in uh, Haitian dancing to finish, it, to finish it off. So essentially it was a, a real crossing of the both cultures like in every way. Right. It was so, it, it really was a great fusion. Um, and I thank you for that. And I should introduce myself to you because you, I haven't done that. But my name is Dominga Robinson. I'm a Jamaican and Nakota woman from uh, Fez Rump, Nakota. Uh, First Nation in Southeast pro uh, southeast corner of Saskatchewan here. So um, yeah, so I'll give you a little bit of context, but yeah, it's beautiful uh, dancing. So um, I'll start off by uh, asking you, Marie Paul. Um, so we're in the middle of a pandemic, things are weird, you know. Um, what kind of challenges um, did you face working in a collaboration in the middle of, of this and how has it affected how you would approach doing this typically, right? It, it definitely was a challenge because we started doing the piece where um, everything was, you know, we're in a bubble. So I work, um, we work together at Lula Lounge. So it's me, um, Dailin, and we work with Mike Dailies. We do workshops together. So luckily we've already established this particular bubble, but definitely a, a challenge because we're used to a crowd. We're used to people. This is something you would perform in front of a crowd, especially such a unique piece. Um, there hasn't been a piece like this um, done yet here in Canada. There has never been such a fusion with uh, Haiti and Cuba. This is very unique. You will not see this again. Uh, maybe in the future. <laughs> yeah, in the future, we'll do another piece. But well, hopefully, yeah. <laughs> but it hasn't been done yet. This is the first time. So we try to fusion everything together. Um, Dailene is a very talented dancer and choreographer. She's from Cuba. She was at the National School of Ballet in Cuba. She's traveled the world. So it was really um, beautiful to work with her because it's a natural 
um, conversation. So as we started like planning, you know, the work and we're like, and we're in the pandemic. I don't know when you're in a pandemic, I don't know why you get extra creativity. <laughs> <laughs> you get <an> extra, <laughs> extra, like, I don't know, you just feel more, because um, there's nothing else to do, but to create. <laughs> right, there's a lack of distractions. It's, yeah. there's, you know, a, a, a chance. I think there's been a lot of really great things happening during this pandemic behind closed doors at this point. <laughs> so, and so it was such a treat for you to come and share this with us, even if virtually it's, it was really wonderful. So, um, oh, sorry. I said it was a treat for me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Dialene, I wanted to ask you, um, a little bit about the motivation for you behind this collaboration and what kind of things you've kind of learned about each other um, and your cultures and your backgrounds, because these are very different countries and so very different cultures. So I'm, I'm curious about the learnings that have happened um, there through this dance. So. Right. Well, when, when Mari came first with this crazy idea, <laughs> I said, well, why not? <laughs> Let's just do it. <laughs> through the project, through the first three steps of, of, of organizing the whole um, project, um, we just realized that we, we have more in common than we thought we had. It doesn't matter how far, where you're coming from, your background, the passion and the roots of, of, of the, the project was, was already there. Mm -hmm. um, the rhythms, the music, the drumming, uh, they had the same mm -hmm. structure mm -hmm. with different right. history behind that. Mm -hmm. So it was amazing because how come we're so different yet so the same the same <laughs> now, similar exactly it, it really it was a beautiful fusion you know it looks like a dance that should have always been so you guys have created something there <laughs> i'll say that and i hope that you continue to do more um in the future and so thank you for uh, taking a few minutes after to chat with me. And um, if you're at home, you got to see the first of a kind here. Um, if you did love it, feel free to donate and help out the arts throughout this challenging time. Anything you can give is very appreciated. Um, what a great wrap up to International Dance Week. It's been a week filled with amazing performances, amazing dancers, just the collaborations. I'm, it's just been a great week. And I thank you both for participating tonight. And I also am gonna thank the sponsors at SAS Culture, SAS Arts, Sightline Design, and of course, Free Flow Dance. This is uh, Dominga Robinson coming to you for the final time this week. You got me for oh, you. did you have? Yeah, I just want to make sure that I do thank Lula Lounge Music World and Arts as well. They are our sponsors as well. Um, and as well, I do want to thank uh, Tracy Ibekor. She is, she is a designer who made these beautiful, traditional Caribbean, Haitian, Cuban-inspired costumes as well. So I do want to give, say a world of thank you to them as well. And my family, my mom. Uh <laughs> <laughs> of course of course no <laughs> thank you thank you again um for your beautiful dance tonight and uh, thank you all at home for tuning in and uh that's a wrap for international dance week online with free flow dance thank you all for joining us this week <laughs> thank you